Welcome to Tech Brother with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to load specific files from a folder uh, when we have more than one type of file sitting in one folder. So let's go to a folder where we have different types of files. In this case, if you guys see that customer file, I have three customer files and they are .txt. There are other files, uh, flat file underscore customer dash csv file comma separated value file and there is one with the dash uh, excel file. What our goal is, uh, we want to load only the file they have extension .txt. Okay, so let's uh, open one file and see the metadata and then create a table according to the file definition. So what we have here, we have ID, first name, last name, address and phone number. So I have already prepared a table where we can load this um, information. So let's go to the SSMS and see the table. Uh, I have table called DBO customer and I have ID, first name, last name, address and phone number. That's the same metadata, uh, almost like same names of uh, columns and uh, uh, you know data type I have selected worker 100 for name uh, first name last name and address so but you can uh, change according to your requirement or data length uh, the for the data you are going to get in the file okay so right now I have truncated this table and uh, there is there is no records in this table right now so let's go and create our SSIS package that will read only text files from a folder and ignore all other files and load to this SQL Server table Okay, so once you open SSDT or bids, you have to open a new project. Okay, so you can, uh, if you, you haven't created the project yet, you can go to new and go to projects and SSIS project. But if you have already one, go to open project. And now I have one project with the call Tech Brothers. I'm going to open it. Okay. Next step would be creating an SSIS package inside the project. Okay, so uh, the project is loading with all those packages right now. It's going to take a couple seconds and uh, then we, are, we will be able to create a new SSIS uh, package. As you see that if you have a lot of SSIS packages uh, in your um, project, uh, when you will open, they, they will be going through the validation and all uh, all the pre-checks. So that, that might take some time to load it. So I, I will advise you just to leave this one as open, you know, and uh, you don't, while you're working. So you come back, you don't have to, you know, spend time opening and closing this project. So, okay, so right click on the SSIS packages, new SSIS package. Okay, it created the one package called package one. Okay, let's rename this one, load only text or dot txt files to sql server table okay so our package is ready to use the very first thing what we have to do we have to read uh, the rec uh, the files from the folder so what i recommend to create a variable you know that that will hold the path of that uh, uh, folder structure so if you are going to deploy your package on different environments such as production or UAT and all that, you can change it according to the uh, environment. If uh, you will hard code here, uh, what happened, then you have to change your package and uh, that's not really a, a good solution. Okay, so to create a variable, click here, you know, and then uh, click here and you can call it uh, folder path, all right. This is going to be string type, okay. Um, what we do next, uh, we have to grab the folder path and paste it there, copy, okay. And go to the variable value and paste it there. Okay, so now the next step is reading the files from the folder. To read the files from the folder, we need to use for each loop container. Okay, so bring it here and now we need to configure it, okay. So right now, go to a collections and inside collection, you have different type of enumerators. What we are doing, we are dealing with the files. So we are gonna select the file for each file enumerator. So once we select that one, the next step is we can provide the directory here, but as we are using the variable, so we, we will not be providing the variable here, okay? So we go to expressions 
and then go to the directory in under the properties and then go to the expressions and provide the value so we have saved the directory or path uh, folder value in this variable so that's we are going to use okay now the next step is the uh, steric dot uh, steric that means uh, read every file so it is starting with it doesn't matter it is starting with any name you know let's say it start with the abc or z or whatever so when you say asterisk it means that it is going to read everything okay and then uh, this one goes for the extension so in my case what is true i want to read every file but that has only extension dot txt okay so now what it is going to do it is going to read all the files that has extension dot txt and name really doesn't matter so i want to read the name and extension of the file because i have the path already okay so next step is uh, going to the variable mapping here we have to map that value to a variable the file name and extension will be read and saved in this variable so we can call it file name okay the type of this variable is going to be string okay now we have mapped the variable now the next step is loading that file or files to the sql server table so to load the files we have to have data flow task let's bring the data flow task and put inside the for each loop double click on that one so as we are reading the file from the flat file source we go to the sources and bring flat file source transformation okay now we have to make a connection let's create a new connection to the file as of now we are going to browse to any of the file that we are going to use among those three files so we go to our folder on desktop import folder here so grab any of that doesn't matter as long as all these files have the same metadata or the definition okay because this is just the connection manager we are making this will be overwritten with the value of file name on each of the iteration for the file uh, for, for the file for, for each loop container okay so we don't have text qualifier uh, you know and header or uh, whatever these default values i'm going to leave that as one because it's simple uh, comma delimited file what i have okay so uh, column names in the first data row that's fine i have the column names in the first row so i'm going to go to the next and just see the columns i'm going to go to advance and uh, see the columns so the next uh, thing you want to do you want to change the data type of these columns you you know and uh, that that's really helpful you know while you're doing mapping and uh, that that will help you to ignore the warnings you know in and uh, save you some time to use the drive column or uh, data conversion and transformations if you have to do conversion you can do it here okay so for id we know that it is going to be integer so i'm going to select the signed integer okay and now for first name let's say it's 50 i can make it 100 even if it's uh, too long but i'm just gonna uh, stick with my definition what i have in the table sorry 100 okay address i'm gonna make it this 100 as well come on 100 all right so the phone number is 50 but in my case in my table it is 10 okay so i have changed the data lens for the all these columns i can change also the name of the column let's say first name i want to make it f name so i can do it okay so you can uh, rename your columns here change the data length and data types uh, uh, everything here and just preview it and then go ahead to the next step so retain null values from the source as a null values in the so uh, in the data flow so what does that mean so if we are getting some blank values and we want to convert them to the null so we need to check this box okay so go to columns and see all columns are coming correctly okay now our next step is loading these uh, uh, files or data from this source to the destination that's uh, we can use oladb destination and then we can connect our oladb uh, destination to the sql server table so we have uh, to connect that one 
to the SQL Server table, we have to create a connection to that database where our table is existing. So click New. Right now, I have uh, already created some connection because uh, I was using in different uh, SSIS packages in this project. Well, let's delete this one, create a new one. Okay. So you can click on a drop down and it's going to give you the server or instant names of what you have on uh, your network and then you can select the required one. So here we have the table in the test database. Test connection looks good. Okay. All right. So the next part is the select a view or a table in which you want to load the data. So let's uh, select our table. So we have DBO customer. That's where we are going to load the data. Go to the mapping and map the columns. So if the column names are same in the source and destination, they are going to map automatically. If they are different, you have to manually map them. So in this case, first name and last name, this has only L name and this is LAST name. So this is different. So we have to map, uh, map manually. Okay. Hit OK. So we are good. Now, if we load these files, what is going to happen? It is going to load only one file three times because we are not using the value of a file name variable in any of the connection. So it's not changing. So if I run it now and go back to my SS, uh, SQL Server table, okay, let's stop this SSIS package and see and go back to the table to check the records. Okay, you guys see that the same values, this is first time it ran, this is the second time it ran, and this is the third time it ran. So what does that mean? Yes, there are three files, so the package ran three times every time it loads the same file because we did not use the file name variable in our connection manager. Okay, it is pointing to the one file at the moment. Okay, so what we need to do here, we need to go to the flat file connection manager and go to the properties and then go to the expressions inside the expressions what we need to do we need to go connection string that's a complete path with folder path and file name so that we have to build here so how that's gonna work so we will have folder path all right and then we need to add the file name and with the extension okay so I'm putting double backslash here to add one you have to add, put two of them here so now we need to put the file name so that is coming from the file name variable right now you do not see any value as there is no value saved in the file name variable at the moment when it will execute it will populate the value and then it will add those values of file name to this expressions and make a full connection string to that file okay hit OK now let's go back and truncate the table we truncated the table and made sure there is no records all right so let's run the SSIS package now and see if it load all those text files in our SSIS uh, SQL Server table okay so as we can see that these two records came from the first file see the IDs are different so they came from another file and the, these are they, they are they came from the third file so what is happening here SSIS package is only reading the text file and it is ignoring the other file like CSV and Excel file so sometimes you have only uh, you know one folder input folder and you you you, you have different packages running on uh, from the same folder and you want for each of the file SSIS package you have uh, you know written code to handle one type of files sometimes you can even write all those you know reading one package and uh, you know then branch it out inside the data flow task you know or using the president's constraint and the different logics to handle all different types of files in one package yep that's pretty much it for today and uh, you guys can visit us sqlage.blogspot.com for more uh, SQL Server posts. Thanks very much.